Welcome to eBuilder University's on-demand video training. If you would like to learn more about additional training opportunities, please contact your account manager. Now let's jump into Scheduling Module Initial Setup. Good day everyone, this is Martin Estazarian, Certified eBuilder Trainer, and today we're going to be reviewing the Schedule Module. This will be a series of videos uh, taking you to different components of how to first set up a schedule, how to manage an existing schedule, and how to close out tasks. And the series will be completed with how to import schedules into eBuilder. So with that, let's begin. When you log into eBuilder, you're going to see your home page, and the first action you're going to take to set up your schedule is click on the schedule module. And I've created a project here conveniently called the schedule training project, just for the purpose of this discussion. And the first page that you should see when you open up your schedule should look something like this. Now, when setting up your schedule, there are a couple of things that you need to understand regarding this page because this page will kind of dictate how the schedule will behave. The page is made up into two sections, one called general and the other one called calendar. Let's first start with the general section. So in the general section, the first thing you're going to have to choose is something called the manager role slash user. Now, for those taking notes watching this video, the schedule manager, which is what you are selecting here, is the person that's going to dictate everything having to do with this schedule. So what are those things that I'm speaking of? First, this person is going to set up the initial schedule. They are the one that's going to draft the schedule, which I will show you in a little bit later in this video. And they are the person that's going to activate and baseline this schedule, hence making it available for the project at hand. But the importance of this role is very high because this is the person that's going to control the schedule from beginning to end. Now, the first question that I always get here from some of our clients is, is can this person be transitioned from one person to another? In other words, can you pass the baton from one one schedule manager to the next? The answer is absolutely yes. This is something that could be edited throughout the course of the project, specifically for those clients that change the schedule manager or the person that controls the schedule as the project goes from phase to phase. So please make a note that that is a possibility, but for now we're going to choose myself as the schedule manager and move on. The next setting that says use external scheduler is going to offer you two choices, yes or no. So let's describe what an external scheduler is. If you say yes here in this field, what you're basically declaring is that the schedule will be updated moving forward via imports. As you probably already know, eBuilder allows you to do a lot of imports into many different modules, including the schedule module. Now, what does this mean? What this means is that if, let's say, there is a client out there or someone using the schedule module that says, we just want to record information in eBuilder in the schedule module, but we will be doing our daily maintenance or our weekly maintenance in another software. Let's just hypothetically say Microsoft Project. So if that was the case and you click yes here, what in essence you're saying is that the schedule module will only be updated via imports as opposed to you manually doing the updating within the schedule module itself. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to take the latter. We're going to actually update items within the schedule itself. Hence, I'm training you on the module. But I just want to let you know that if you are going to be using another tool, such as Microsoft Project or P6, which is a very popular tool, you do have the ability to import that directly into eBuilder. And if you click yes here, you're basically stating that that is the only way you're going to manage the schedule by importing something in. And the reason I emphasize this is because if you click yes, in essence, what the result will be in eBuilder is that the action buttons needed to manually update things in eBuilder are going to be gone. Now, let me just clear one misconception. If you were to click no here and use external scheduler, you would still be able to initially import a schedule into eBuilder, which is one of three ways that you can get a schedule going. But then moving forward, you would update it using the module itself. So a lot of notes, a lot of thoughts around that one setting, but I just want to make sure all of you are aware of what it does. Finally, the last setting in the general section, reading automatically calculate the percent complete, it's simply a checkbox. And if you were to check this box like so, what you're in essence saying is that the system, the module, will actually determine automatically what your percent complete is based on a date range. So typically when I train this, I give very simple dates. That way you guys can understand what I'm talking about here, okay? So let's hypothetically say a specific activity in the schedule module starts on January 1st and ends on January 10th. If you were on January 5th, 
the system would assume that you are 50% complete with the task because you are halfway between 1 and 10. Now, if you click this, the system will automatically update that percent complete for you. However, in the construction world, I find that most people like to have a little bit more control over that percent complete, specifically when it revolves around invoicing. So if you do check this off, the system will automatically declare what your percent complete is based on time. But if you have it unclicked, the system will allow you to manually determine what your percent complete is um, without it automatically calculating it for you based on time. So I would probably argue that the most popular choice here would be to uncheck this. But again, being aware of what it does is important. Now let's scroll down here to the calendar section, which I find to be very easy. Even if you've never done scheduling before, I think that most people would understand what these fields are designed to do. This is what I call parameters. You're setting up the basic parameters of a schedule and you're determining how it's going to behave based on these parameters, okay? So let's begin. The very first thing that you're going to choose here is what I would probably argue is the most critical thing, which is the start date. The start date is the date where you are beginning to bill or do something against the project budget. That is my interpretation. Everybody's interpretation is different. But the reason I say it that way is because some people would probably assume that the schedule begins when design begins or when construction begins. There are those phases that some of our clients use, which is programming, planning, when the funding is being put together. I would declare that the minute that time is being spent against the project, that would be the start date. And that would give you a better idea as to the length of time. However, for every client, it will vary. This is a conversation that every client has with eBuilder implementation teams on a daily basis. And it will vary from client to client. But as long as you know what your start date is, your physical start date is, this is exactly where you would put it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the date from February 23rd. And I'm going to put today's date, which is, let's see, let's go back to July and we are currently uh, in the 8th, okay, 2018. Now, the fields below are kind of the same thing, except just different increments of time, hours per day, hours per week, days per month. And this is why I call this section the parameters, because a synonymous term for this would be the rules of engagement. In other words, you're telling the schedule module that the work days and the work weeks and months are going to be this length of time. And the reason this is so important is because the schedule will automatically calculate delays or maybe some wins as far as getting stuff done early based on these parameters. These are just kind of numbers that will automatically calculate different time frames for your activities. And you'll see that when we actually set up our schedule for the first time based on these parameters. Now, a big note that I have to say here. If, let's say, you decide to use external scheduling, which is something we spoke about earlier in the general section, Please be aware that these parameters may be different than the parameters that are on the software that you're using. In other words, if you let's say you're importing Microsoft Project, please make sure that the parameters here are in line with that of the other software. Because if they are not, then you're going to get conflicting information when you import something from one system to another. Okay, so just be aware of that for now and understand the importance of these parameters. I'm going to leave them as is. The second part of this is the start time and the end time on a daily basis. Very important in my opinion, right? Sometimes projects go every single day. Sometimes projects go from six in the morning or five in the morning all the way to seven o'clock PM. It doesn't really matter. As long as you understand what that time frame is, it's important. Now, if you scroll down, you're also going to see the weeks listed here, the days for the week. So you can determine whether your project is going to be a work week project or if it's going to be a 24 hour project. Maybe it's a project that's gonna last 24 hours a day and it's never gonna stop. Again, important for you to select these to make sure that the schedule understands the rules of engagement of the project. So please be sure that you do this, okay? That concludes this video where we talk about the initial settings of the schedule. And in the next video, we're going to start creating and assembling a schedule for our project. Thank you for watching. If you would like to learn more about additional training opportunities, please contact your account manager.